Hello and welcome to East to West WLS, where we support the bariatric community with humor, humility, and honesty. I'm April and I'm the West. And I'm Jason and I'm the East. Today we are so excited to welcome a very prominent member of our bariatric community, Mabel from Beyond the Sleeve Academy. Hi Mabel! Hey everybody! We had the amazing opportunity to welcome Mabel as a guest at our recent virtual bariatric meetup in March because it was all focused on mindset. And the reason that we were so excited to have Mabel as a guest because you are the mindset guru in the community. That is your jam. You, I know you live and breathe and think mindset. It's yeah. everything. <laughs> so our conversation today is really gonna deep dive into that. And before we kind of get down to the, the business of this conversation, I do wanna let our followers and our listeners know uh, we are adorable humans and we're very animated when we talk. We have a YouTube channel and all of our episodes are uploaded to YouTube for you to watch. So if you would prefer to, 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 to learn that way, head over to YouTube, search East to West underscore WLS. You will find our YouTube channel, like subscribe, hit that notification button. So you will know, uh, you'll be the first one to be notified when new episodes drop, but uh, it is a different modality of learning. And we know that some people enjoy watching instead of listening. So we are here to support you in any way that works best for you. So hop over to our YouTube channel and, and subscribe and, and watch us there. Okay, so Mabel, before we really deep dive into the conversation, will you just briefly introduce yourself to our listeners and our watchers? If you wanna share your age and where you live, uh, what when you had your, your bariatric procedure and why you're so passionate about supporting uh, our community. Okay, so I'm Mabel and I'm from New York, um, the Buggy Down oh. Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had surgery June of 2018, um, so I'm almost sitting my third year, um, wow. and I love this community, and I love mindset because it's really everything, and I don't know, it just, I have a passion for mindset because of the, the, the way that you could create anything in your life when, once you get in control of your mind, so that's it. Well, and the, our, our, our world's most prominent thinkers, when, when you go back and you look at kind of like the, the real important things that they have said or done, they always equate it back to their mindset. It's always, I basically thought it, I believed it, and I, and I did it. But it really, mm -hmm. you know, the, the nucleus or the very beginning of their greatness in life went back to their mindset. Yeah. So clearly this is something that our, you know, the world's most accomplished people have focused on. And you have learned to really harness your mindset to find the success in your life that you have created yes. so yeah our conversation today is really just focused on mindset what it is first and foremost how do we even recognize what our mindset is and then how do we recognize if it's serving us or not serving us and if it's not serving us how can we change it uh, I think my biggest takeaway from Sunday and I probably Jason you would say the same thing too is that it's not necessarily what a mindset is but it's that uh, change, changing our mindset is going to invoke a physical and an emotional painful response. It is not pleasant. It is not supposed to be pleasant. And what you really taught us is that for, for us to shift our mindset, we have to move into that discomfort. We have to move beyond it, not run away from it. Mm -hmm. And that's something different that we're hardwired to do the opposite of that. So I know that this conversation is really going to address, address that. So, okay. I think we're ready to do it. You guys ready to dive in? Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> All right. So first things first, we always love to kind of give the floor to our guests to really let us know how did you become the person that you are today? How did you become, you know, the woman, the, the thinker, the, the individual who's sitting in front of us today? Okay. Um, so I had, sur when I had the surgery, I honestly and truly, I thought that the surgery in itself was going to solve all my problems. I struggled so much with food. I've been overweight all my life. And I was just like, I need something. I need okay. something to stop me from eating. And then I got the surgery and then I was like, oh shit, I still have the same problems and I'm never going to lose the weight because after a while, right? Like you could just keep eating. Yes. And, um, I just, just like, okay, Mabel, you can't do this. Like, we're going to have to find a solution. So I just started reading books, started listening to podcasts, just started opening my mind to things. And it hit me like, oh, 
this is the mindset work. Like everybody's always telling us, oh, you have to work on your mindset, but nobody teaches us how to do it and apply it every single day. And that's the problem. So, I mean, after I learned that, my mind was like blown. Like I was like, oh my God, I am the creator of my life. Like I could create any result in my life once I focus on my mindset. And that's when I got into it, got deep into the whole, into the whole personal development. Um, I got certified by my life coach um, in her certified um, school. And that's how the journey began. So, Wow. And what surgery did you have? The sleeve surgery. Um, okay. VSG. So how much weight have you lost since, since your procedure? 120 pounds. Oh, oh, you and I were twinsies. Okay. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Jason's over there like 176 or 180 or some. Ooh, I'm sorry. Number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Overachiever over here. In my bed. I know. Uh huh. <laughs> so, Mabel, would you feel comfortable telling us why do you think you struggled with your weight your entire life? Okay, so one of the main things is I um, had, I cannot pronounce this word, but it's called HS. And pretty much what it is, is that I had this chronic um, autoimmune disease that pretty much creates boils. So all my life, I had these boils. I was so uncomfortable. And I guess the way that I used to cope with it was food. That was the only thing that used to make me happy back then, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, And it was just overeating. And then it was overeating because I was unhappy and trying to figure out my life. And then, you know, when you're younger, people bullying you because you're overweight. Um, I got really deep and I forgot the question. (laughs) No, that, that is the point of the question is, oh, to, there you is go. to go deep. You're no, you're good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was that. Um, you asked me why I was overweight. Yeah. Why you struggle with your weight? Yeah. Oh, that and um I just didn't know what I didn't know, honestly. And just my my culture, like we love to eat. Like food is everything. So it just seemed like I was just living my normal life. Um, I wasn't that big. I was normal, like in my family. So it was just, it was just the way of life, like just eating, to be honest. So what, what, what was the moment or or what was the thing Mm -hmm. that made you commit to weight loss surgery? Right. I mean, if, if, if everybody in your family is larger or if you just are in a community of larger people and it's kind of accepted, what was the thing that then you know, made that decision for you or or caused you to make that decision? Well, I guess I was able to ignore it a lot until I guess while I was in college, I just felt so sluggish. I was just like, this can't be life. Mm -hmm. Like every day was a dread. The way I just looked at life, I couldn't even go to a clothing store and feel good about what I was wearing. I used to miss events on purpose. Um, used to not want to party. It was just like, I, I, I just told myself like, Mabel, what are you doing? Like, and even when I looked in the mirror, I'm like, this can't be life. Like me looking in the mirror every day and hating myself. Like, this is not how I want to live my life. And one day somebody mentioned it. Um, they were like, oh yeah, somebody had weight loss surgery. And I was like, weight loss surgery. I'm going to do this the natural way. I ain't going to do that. And, and I was just like, and then I really thought about it. I'm like, Mabel, what is the big deal? Like, what, what if you could just get help? Who cares what way you do it? Just take authority of your life and just do something about it. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get surgery. <laughs> well, right? and, it's, and it's crazy that you mentioned that because especially, you know, coming from the culture where, you know, where food is, is such a huge deal coming from your family who, like you said, you fit in with everybody, even being bigger. That's just how everybody rolled. Mm-hmm. And I get that. But it, it's crazy how taking ourselves out of a situation like that, where it is so prevalent and it's not a big deal to be big in that era. But when you put yourself in a situation where none of that is the case and you see people going about their day where food doesn't rule their life and you see Mm -hmm. people that are you know quote unquote a normal or more acceptable size 
you get to a point where you start thinking that, well, maybe this isn't as cool as I thought it was. Maybe it's not as okay as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And that, and, you know, essentially that is your first shift in mindset because you start veering from the path of what you've done for so long. Mm -hmm. You see it, you start thinking, well, shit, maybe what I thought was cool all this time really isn't the way because I see how, you know, this person that's in my class that I'm going to, she got here, you know, we left the same time, but she's been here for 15 minutes and in her seat and ready to go. And I walk in looking like I just ran a damn track meet and I'm sweating down all everything. And it's, you know, catching my breath, getting in my seat, if I'm able to get in my seat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's all those things that begin to start shifting your mindset at it, you know, earlier than, than we actually think it does. Right. Well, and, and all of this conversation, it takes me back to the first time that I had heard about mindset, which was in my capacity as an educator. Carol Dweck is an educational researcher, and she kind of coined this phrase, uh, growth mindset. And I remember going to my first training about this, and I was like, well, this is like stupid. I don't understand. Like, how is this something that is like new information? Mm -hmm. But what she really discovered is that we can't even begin to shift our mindset until we recognize that there is actually a different mindset out there from what we currently believe. And I was like, oh, that, that is huge, right? Because if we don't even think that we can change our mindset or that it needs to be changed or that we have one, then none of this work exists. And really what Mabel, you said, and Jason is you, if we approach life with this growth mindset or, or if we just keep our eyes and ears open and we don't close it off to these new things that we're hearing, mm -hmm. we can acknowledge that there is in fact a different reality out there and that that different reality might be better than our current one. Mm -hmm. If we can't even acknowledge that, then this conversation is pointless because you really have to acknowledge, no, there is a different reality. It might actually serve me better. And I could actually live that other reality and be okay. And maybe be a better person. Right. It's like living your life in curiosity. Like, oh, maybe, maybe it is possible. You know what I mean? Like just being open to the possibility, it just changes everything. Okay. That gave me goosebumps. <laughs> Holy Did shit. Did it get goosebumps? That Right. But it's so true. You, you no, said no. you, we've like, we're like five minutes in and you've already said two very powerful things, right? Something about, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. And not beating yourself up over that. You're just acknowledging the fact that I just didn't know it at the time. So it's not that I wasn't doing the best that I could. I just didn't know what I didn't know. And that's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. That's acceptable. And then yeah, living our life with, in curiosity, we really do have to be curious about what, what could possibly be out there. It's not that you're committing to it, but you're just saying, well, I wonder that that's intriguing or that's different. And I'm going to take it in. It doesn't mean that we're going to adopt it. It doesn't mean we're going to make it a part of our permanent recipe. It just mm -hmm. means that I'm going to become aware of it. And I'm going to learn that it's out there. Yes. Girl, it changes everything. It in your does. Life. I mean, it really does, because like you said, I mean, be, being open to outside things that, you know, you aren't familiar with, it, it's cool, but it's almost not enough. You've got to be willing to take that extra step to at least investigate it and see, because like we talk about with workouts, with all kinds of others, with food plans, with meal preps, with all that other stuff, you don't know if you're going to like it, but you at least, if you give it a shot or investigate it a little further, mm -hmm. that may be something that you try to dive off into. And it may be something that you never in your, in a billion years thought that that would be prevalent to you, but you may adopt that as, as your life motto going forward. And it may change everything about, you know, what you see coming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that the word curiosity is powerful. It's almost key, right? It's like, you really do need to get curious uh, mm -hmm. with, with what lies ahead. Because as you said, Mabel, and I think we all go into bariatric surgery with that same mindset of, well, I'm going to have surgery and that's going to fix everything. Only yeah. to realize <laughs> that fixed nothing. It, it, it did fix one thing. It let me know when I was full and it let me know, hey, homegirl, if you keep eating, you're going to puke. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that is very helpful. I absolutely needed that tool, but that's the only thing that bariatric surgery gives you. That's it. The rest, mm -mm. you got to do it all on your own. You have it to do is it on you. Oh, dude. Okay. So after surgery, you, you had this realization, aha, I need more than surgery. And you have discovered mindset. That is the thing. Yeah, I really became like really interested in what is 
what does it mean to work on your mindset? Because I was just tired of people saying, oh, it's your mindset. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so for, much. Yes, it does. Okay, so that so that's the first place that, that we want to start. We always want to make sure that we're kind of speaking the same language when when we branch into these areas that are are new to us. So, mm-hmm. what is mindset to you? How do you define mindset? Seems like a big question. What is <laughs> mindset? Is everything no? Um, mindset is really how you choose to think about the things that are happening to you. It's choosing to think in a different way, um, choosing to approach life in a way that serves you. Um, Mindset is a whole bunch of stuff, (laughs) but that's the main thing. It's just your perspective like on the world and how you choose to think about everything that happens to you. And the, the key word there that I would highlight in your definition is choice or choose, because yes, it really choose. is a choice. It, it always. Yes. And I think Jason and I, we kind of go back and forth with this a lot in our private conversations. I mean, Jason and I talk all the time about our bariatric journeys. We're always bouncing things off of each other because shit happens and we call each other. We're like, oh my God, this is going on. You know, what does this mean? Or, you know, or whatever it is. And I think 90% of the time, Jason, you and I's conversation is actually about mindset, right? Because I'll call you or you'll call me and we'll be like, oh my God, I gained five pounds or I did this or I'm such an idiot or blah, 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 blah. Right. But then we really kind of give each other the space to just get it off, right? Just to, to get it off our chest and have it said publicly. But then really our conversations kind of shift into, okay, but okay, well, what are you going to do now? Or what did you learn about that? Or, okay, well, is that really that bad? Or are you beating yourself up over something that you shouldn't, right? We're really having these conversations that are helping us get into, helping us get out of our old brains, which we're beating ourselves up and get the, get our thinking into our rational brains where we can problem solve, right? Because that's mindset. Right. And you know what? I'm looking behind me and I'm like, duh, that, that's it. It's always our thoughts, right? Because our thoughts is what really generates all our feelings and our feelings is what drives all our actions and our actions get our results. So if if I could just say what's mindset, your thoughts. It's always your thoughts. Wow, wow, okay. Was so, the whole time. <laughs> 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 that, that's a story of life. Right. But, but you're also, I mean, but you're right though, because it is a lot of things. It's not you can't it can't just be narrowed down to one thing because there's a lot of people that approach that in a different way. So the the different definitions of it only help other people to figure out that that's what they're actually dealing with. They just like you said, they don't know what they don't know, and until they can put a name, you know, a face to a name to a thought process to a you know, until they can drill down on that, you know, that's it, it is a lot of different things. So you were actually right in your in your initial you know definition of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so how can we recognize what our current mindset is? And then I guess this is really kind of a, a two-part question. How do we recognize what our mindset is? Mm-hmm. And then how do we identify if that mindset is hindering us or serving us? How do we, how do we figure out, is it good or is it bad? Well, you look at your results. You look at all the results in your life. Like, what is it that you're creating in your life? If you like your results, then I guess you don't have to look at your mindset. But if there's things in your life that you're creating, well, a lot of people don't even know that they're creating it. But if there's results in your life that you do not like, then it's basically tracing it back to what actions are you taking? What feelings are you feeling that are driving you to take those actions? And what thoughts are you having that's creating those feelings? So again, that's, you look at your results and then you just go backwards to like really figure out like what is it that you're thinking? Yeah, so really you're you're reverse engineering what you had said earlier, right? Whereas like your mindset creates feelings, feelings create action. What you're saying is reverse engineer that. Start right. with your actions. If it's not going well, well, what are those feelings that are behind that? And then what, okay, what are your right. thoughts that so, are driving that? So really analyze your life. Like, I don't think... A lot of people just don't sit down and like look at their life like like a movie. Yeah. What is it about my life that I don't like, that I want to change, 
that doesn't make me happy. Just sit down and like, look at your life, journal and, and know that you could create a different life. Like it's possible. Well, and the biggest thing that, that, that comes to my mind when you're saying it that way is we hear a lot of times people in our community talk about how they struggle with meal prepping before they had surgery or they struggled with working out before they had surgery. Like, I didn't like working out. I hate working out. I hate meal prep and I hate doing all that stuff. And I never did it before surgery. So doing it after surgery is really hard. And right. we get that 1000%. I, I 100% get that because we saw workout as a punishment because, it, you know, I, I ate this cheesecake. So I got to run to the gym and work off that cheesecake. So mm-hmm. now it's horrible. And now I got to do that. Now that I'm done with that, I don't have to work out again until I have more cheesecake. So when you break it down and look at it that way, you have to break it down and say, well, now that I am, I've had the surgery and and I'm starting to live a healthier life, my body's craving movement. My body is urging me to get up and move and do something. So now those workouts aren't a punishment for what I've eaten. It's more fuel for my body to actually get to the weight that I want to get to or get to the next, you know, my next goal weight that I've set for myself or the next, you know, pair of pants that I want to fit in. That's how you have to reverse engineer that to go from a punishment to actually serving you in a positive way. Um, I just wanted to add to that too. Like even question that thought, I hate working out. Why? You know what I mean? Why do you hate working out? Why do you hate meal prepping? Like really question those thoughts. Like why do you? And analyzing yourself. Well, and my... My personal life guru, may she be looking down on me from from the heavens, she passed uh, last year. One of the most powerful things she ever said to me, which is exactly what you said, is I was going on and on and on about something. And this was like 20 years ago, I think at this point. I mean, I was like in my young 20s. Um, and I was like, oh, this is just, you know, F, like this is just ridiculous or whatever. I was very upset. And she just looked at me and she's like, hmm, and how's that working out for you? Oh, that's my favorite question. Oh, and I was literally just like, oh, you have got to be kidding. I think that was the first time I ever like straight up cussed out a therapist. And thank God she was the woman who she was because she just gave it all back to me. And she was like, well, it's a simple question, darling. Why are you so resistant to this? How is that working out for you? You know, you're just like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Oh my God, my clients hate when I ask them that question, they hate it so much. Right, but it's so true because it is the, it is the quickest route to get to the, the real issue at hand, which is I, we just don't want to ask ourselves that question because it's going to force us to actually do some work. So why do you think, Mabel, people are so resistant to taking this moment of pause and asking that question? Why, why do they not want to do it? Um, first of all, your brain doesn't really want to do it (laughs) because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Now you're going to reveal things about yourself that you've been trying to avoid all this time. And now you have to sit down and really acknowledge that you're the problem, that this is you. And it's okay. But I mean, that initial moment where you realize that is you doesn't feel so great, but it doesn't mean that you can't change it, but I mean, it doesn't, it's not amazing. It doesn't feel amazing at all. Well, well, because for so many years, we've been kicking the can down the road, blaming other things outside of our life because that's easier because change is difficult. And even though staying the same also means some pain and discomfort, it is less pain and discomfort than actually doing the work to acknowledge that, oh, this is actually my issue and nothing outside of it. I actually have mm-hmm. to do the work. And your brain, right? Uh, your brain is so used to, blaming the outside world, right? It's just become automatic. So now you're doing something different and your brain is like, wait, what are, you, what are we doing? We're gonna sit down and think about this? And it's, mm. it's discomfort, it's something different. So your brain well, is just like well, signaling you like, what's going on? <laughs> right, well, and you have to, you know, April, I talk about this a, a lot. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable post-op. If you're really gonna make those changes, you've got to sit with it. And the worst part about it is, is you no longer have your Band-Aid with food. You can't sit down and eat your way through those feelings. You don't have your comfort blanket. You don't have that. You have to really sit down, get raw with yourself. And it sucks. And that's okay. Like, it's okay to suck. It's okay to feel awful. It's okay to really shit on yourself because of how you conducted yourself up to this point. But you can't live there. 
you you can you can think about it you can discuss it you can unpack it but then you got to clean all that shit back up again and keep it moving because you can't if you just sit in all of that discomfort and you're going to dwell on it and you're never going to make any changes and until you actually start doing that that's the tough work of weight loss surgery that people really have a hard time getting through but you've got to dig down and get through it to make it to the other side to actually reach all the success that you're going for in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. Well, uh, this is this is addiction transfer. This is why people regain their weight. It's because they get to this point, they realize, oh my God, this is the work I have to do. It is very uncomfortable. It is more uncomfortable than than me being at my high weight. And we look for another band-aid. And I think all of us at some point will transfer that addiction, right? Or that dependence. We will look for our other Band-Aid. We all know alcohol, number one in men and women. Uh, the number two in women is shopping. The number two in men is sex. Then it's, um, yeah, then you just go down the, the litany of, whole bunch of stuff. right? The whole bunch of stuff, right? So if you don't just sit in the discomfort and figure it out, you are going to go to another Band-Aid and that Band-Aid will lead to weight regain, which gets you right back to where you were before surgery, because then you just fall back into your old ways. And here's the thing, and I love telling this to people, we run away so much from feelings, but feelings are just vibrations in your body. Like truly, like nothing is happening to you, but vibrations in your body. And if you just keep reminding yourself that those discomf- that discomfort, any negative emotion that you might be trying to run away from is just vibrations in your body that your brain is producing because it's on a uh, fight or flight mode. And that's mm-hmm. it. Like mm-hmm. nothing is happening outside of you. Everything is no. happening inside. Yes. You just have to be with, with, the, with the vibrations. Yep. And, and, you know, based on conversations I've had with, with my therapist, you know, the reason that I turned to food in the first place was because my brain perceived at some point in my young life that I was in peril, that I was really like on the edge of dying, even though I'm not living a Neanderthal life and there are not saber tooth animals chasing me. My brain thought, oh my God, you are, you are in the moment of dying. And it did whatever it could do to get me out of that moment of panic. And it happened to be food, right? I could have gone to drugs. I could have gone to who knows what, right? Like my brain was, it was going to find something to get me out of that fight or flight pattern. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it went with food. So that knowledge gave me the grace to thank my brain for doing what it was hardwired to do, which was keep me alive. So I've got, I have a perfectly functioning brain. This thing is, woo. Oh, money. Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it just happened to click to do one thing to keep me alive. And, and if I can recognize that, it's a shift in my mindset because instead of me beating myself up, I can thank myself for doing what it was programmed to do. I can have, I can shift that mindset from shame to appreciation and then move forward knowing what it did. You know, and the other thing that Wendy really helped me understand and in the, the you know, basic research that I've done about our brain and brain development, you know, our brains have not evolved at the speed at which our species have. Mm -hmm. So that old brain is still thinking that there are dinosaurs that are looking to kill me. We're in a caveman. We are still in the cave, even though I'm living in a palatial home, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and and all, and all those animals. And we have Netflix, said, Uber, and all these great <laughs> things going on. <laughs> I don't even have to worry about snakes. Like, I mean, you know, I got like nothing, right? I mean, I've got traps sitting in my home for things that might be my food, right? I mean, right. so things are very different, but that brain is still stuck in an unlit cave in a jungle somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it just is, it's not computing with the modern world. So I'm trying to battle these modern issues with a very primitive brain. And it's not my brain's fault, but I, but because I'm advanced, I now have to do the work of letting my new brain know, Hey, things have changed. And I know you haven't caught up yet. That's okay. I need to bring you up to speed. And that's what this work is. Yes, it is. You said it so beautifully. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> no, <you laughs> it, was, didn't. it was said, 
Well, and in all these conversations about mindset, I keep coming back to to this book. I mentioned mm-hmm. it um, at the bariatric meet meetup. the The name of the book is I'm not swearing because I want to, even though you guys know I love to do it. The book is called Unfuck Yourself. It's Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life by Gary John Bishop. When I read this book, I chucked it across the room, and I also swore at him in the privacy of my own home because he's such a wizard like that. Uh, but he has a whole chapter that is really dedicated to this. It's called it's Chapter Five. I embrace the uncertainty. And he basically, he says it straight out. He just says, you have a gnawing craving and that craving is for prediction. Certainty. We seek the certain and avoid the uncertain. We want to be prepared. Well, I know how to live life at a heavier weight. I did that for 20 years. That is certain. That is predictable. Even though it would kill me in the long run, it is a better existence than the uncertainty of living life right now, because I do not know how to live my life as a thinner mm-hmm. person. I don't, I have no flipping clue. And that just makes that, that is the uh, equation for a ball of anxiety to permanently reside in our guts. That's not fun. Right. It takes your brain so much energy. It does. It to does. Be this new person. Yes. So how do we shift it? How do we shift our mindset and get it to a place that is serving us and that does not cause this uncertainty or this anxiety? So here's the thing. That feeling is never going to go away. Mabel, what the hell? (laughs) It's never going to go away. We did not have you on here to drop this ridiculousness bullshit right. on us. I'm you know, sorry. Thanks for being here today, Mabel, but I think April and I are done. We don't want to hear that shit. Right? <laughs> oh, that's sorry. That is the bad news. Um, it is never going to go away. Um, but the good news is you can manage it once you learn how to manage your brain. Those Feelings are supposed to be there. It's part of the human experience. It's part of us being alive. And now, instead of making the anxiety and disappointment and all those negative emotions mean that something has gone terribly wrong and that your life is going to end or something, you question it and, and really see how you could use those emotions to serve you. Like, why do you feel anxiety? Is it because you're about to do something different? Is it a, a signal that maybe you're doing, you're going towards the right direction? It's really like changing your, I was gonna say mindset, but really changing your thoughts about that, those negative emotions and, and thinking, thinking of them as messages. Like, what now? Because I know my life is not gonna end. What can, how can I use this emotion to serve me? To my, for my goal. Um, but yeah, those feelings are not going to go away. It's just part of you. It's built into you. So no amount of thoughts, nothing is going to get those feelings out the way. Well, I mean, the fear, the fear of uncertainty is so strong. And, you know, even though I'm 45 years old and I now realize the majority of things in my life where I was so afraid of the unknown or change or whatever that may be, once I embraced the change, yeah, it may have been a little, little, you know, a little off center for a little while, but once I got into the groove of whatever the new thing was, it was fine. There was really nothing to be afraid of all that time. Mm-hmm. And even though I have 45 years of experience on this planet doing that same shit, like you said, it doesn't ever go away. It's never day. Anytime anything ever comes up like that, that knock comes back, all your thoughts race, you know, you have a hard time sleeping, you have a hard time making it through your day, you can't focus. That's just part of the, like you said, that's part of the life experience and, you know, attributing it from other things, whether it be your professional life, your personal life, whatever it may be, to your everyday mindset will just let, will allow you to know that you can adjust, you can adjust those things just like you've adjusted them in your normal everyday life, whether it be a promotion or a different position at work, something like that, how you adjusted and attacked that same change. You could do that in your everyday personal life that, that in regards to weight loss surgery, mm-hmm. your new diet, your new exercise plan, your new, whatever that may be, you just have to keep that same, that, you know, kind of like we had said before that, you know, keep your mind open to those new changes and it won't be as anxiety ridden inside of you. It won't tear you up there as much. Yeah, I think it's really like 
what are you making it mean? Like, are you making it mean that something is wrong with you because you feel anxiety? But if you tell yourself, oh no, just have a human brain, it's right on time, this is, this is normal, we're gonna do the thing anyway. It just changes it, it's less heavy. Like, you know that it's coming, it's not a big deal, we'll move on. And the more you do it, the less anxiety you'll feel in that area. But I mean, once you start doing something else, you'll feel it in that area too. And you just keep repeating it over and over. And then your brain is going to start like, oh, okay, we've done this before. It's not a big deal. So the anxiety level will start going down, but it's just moving towards it. Wow. Okay, so so what can we do? How how can we move towards that? What what are some tools or some tricks or what are some exercises that we can do to safely move towards this new mindset? I'm not gonna lie to you. You just make a decision and just move forward. That is that's really the answer. Just yes. Knowing that nothing is going to happen. I mean, seriously, if you're doing something that's not gonna harm you, yeah. it's really not gonna harm you. Yeah. Uh, it's just making the decision, being brave, and just move towards it. And just- well, and the, and the, crazy, the crazy thing is at the end of the day, it almost, I mean, it, it truly becomes a life or death decision because we know that the certainty of living at a higher weight is death. And it's death sooner than if you live life at a lighter weight. I mean, it's just, you know, you know, the end of the story, you know, the final chapter, if you stay heavy and you stay unhealthy and you live that way, mm -hmm. the, the uncertainty is choosing life and moving forward. But at the end of the day, you have chosen life and regardless of, you know, it's, it's absolutely better than death, regardless of anything that life throws at you, you know, while you're on your journey of weight loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and when I, I guess when, when I really started to understand that surgery was not fixing what I actually needed it to fix, I really sat down and Wendy, my therapist encouraged me, she said, well, who do you want to be? Or what is going to be your new identity? Mm. And I said, well, I want to identify as a healthy person. I want somebody to look at me and go, she's healthy. So then, you know, Wendy really kind of pushed me even further. And she's like, well, what does that mean? Or what does that look like? And I was like, well, shit, I guess I don't know because I've never technically been a healthy person, right? Like I've been, right? Like I've, I've done some things, but I have not been uh, a healthy person. So I literally sat down and I made this like little graphic and I just said, okay, well, what is, if I was a healthy person, what would I be doing or what would that look like? And I'd said, okay, well, I would obviously eat well. I would be active. I would probably sleep well and I would have mental clarity, right? Okay, so there's some four big areas. Well, then I was like, well, shit, what, is, what does that even mean, right? So then mm -hmm. under each one of those categories, well, if I was eating nutritiously, I would be taking my vitamins, I'd be following all of my VSG requirements, um, I would, um, you know, be tracking what I was eating. I'd be able to tell people like what I eat on a consistent basis. So then really it was like, oh, okay, well, I guess these are the things that I need to do. These are, these are the pieces of evidence that would prove to myself and the world that mm -hmm. I was in fact a healthy person. So I just kind of reverse engineered kind of what I wanted to, to be. And I did that in, in all of these areas. And this kind of gave me a roadmap, I guess, for shifting my identity for collecting that evidence. Mm -hmm. But really what I'm looking at this, this is also a mindset, right? Because now instead of a person, you know, my mindset of, oh, well, I could never eat, I can never eat those things because they're not good or I don't want to eat them. The mindset shift is, well, no, I'm eating those things because I am a healthy person. This mm -hmm. is what a healthy person does, right? So for me, this was kind of like how I guess I helped make that mindset shift away from what I was doing to what I wanted to do. Yes, that, that's a beautiful um, tool to really uh, think about who you want to be, visualize that person, and then begin yeah. acting as if you are that person. Yes, that, that was a technique that you shared with us at the virtual yes. bariatric meetup. This mm -hmm. like, you know, imagining yourself as a character. Yes. And then, right, and, and I think, I think, where people get hung up on these techniques is that it's one thing to say, well, I want, I want to be this person or like affirmations, right? Like I, I am this person. It's one thing to say that 
and believe it. But it's another thing to actually know how to get there. And I think the step that people always miss is that, no, you really do need to get pen to paper, so to speak. And you need to say, okay, well, if I am that person, what am I doing then? Mm -hmm. Right? You have to actually identify the things that you are going to do each and every day to actually become that person. Because if you say that you are that person, awesome, step one. But then step two is you actually have to do those things. And if you don't know what those things are, you're never going to do them because you haven't identified them. Right. And there's well, no the, right or wrong no. answer. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to catch up, but go ahead. Okay. There's no wrong or right answer. It's really what you want to be as that person. How do you live? Where, what places are you going? What foods are you eating? What are you, what are you wearing? Like really picture every detail of how your life will be if you were in that identity, like a character in a play. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and, the, and the, the really way, the most simple term that I think of when I hear you saying all that is the same. It goes back to what we learned when we were younger, visualize, believe, and achieve. You have to visualize what's going on. You've got to believe that you can do it. And you will achieve those things by, you know, believing what you visualize. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the belief part is so hard for us, especially in the bariatric community, because we have never actually seen ourselves as that person, right? We don't we have any succeeded. evidence. No, exactly. We never succeeded. We, we, we have never, we don't know what it feels like to live that life because we've just never done it. We have no evidence of it. And there are moments that we can think back on in our lives that we didn't have evidence that we would be successful in that area, but we did it anyways. Like, I mean, just think about like getting our driver's license. We didn't, you know, we, we saw people driving and we could envision ourselves driving, but that was really scary. We had no evidence that we could actually be successful drivers, but yet we practiced and, and we got there. Now, you know, we're, we're driving. I think it's the same thing for people who are parents, right? You don't know what it's like to be a parent. You have no clue what that's going to be like, mm -hmm. but you just do it and you kind of figure it out along the way. And then before you know it, you are a parent and you are doing it well. And, you know, there's stumbling blocks along the, along the way, but you make those adjustments as you go. So it can be the same thing for our lives after bariatric surgery. We can successfully live our lives at a weight that's healthy for us. We just have to believe that we will have the skill set to get there. And if we don't, we will reach out to people. We will figure it out. We will find the help that we need to, to get there. You know, what? one of the things, what, did I interrupt you? No. Oh, one of the things that I find that stops people from believing is thinking about how they're going to get there and trying to be perfect and being afraid of failing or getting it wrong. But what they don't understand is getting it wrong is actually the way to understanding how to get it right. You're not supposed to know, like once we get to surgery, you're not supposed to know everything. Like you're, you need to take the steps and fail forward. That's one of the other tools that I like to use is you're not failing, you're failing forward because now when you didn't, you didn't accomplish it then, you kind of analyze what you could have done better. And from that moment, you take, you do it again. And now you'll be, you'll be better than when you first started. And you just keep going and going until you actually accomplish it. There's no reason to be scared of failing. Yeah, you literally only fail when you stop trying it. And we, you know, like I said, we have we have come through so many failures in our life. Like I said, we've never succeeded at losing weight. We've tried every diet out there. We've tried every fad. We've tried exercise. We've tried everything and none of that worked. So mm -hmm. technically in our minds, we failed that many times. Well, now with the surgery, everybody's saying, well, I'm afraid I'm going to fail again. Well, with the surgery, this is one of the main and only re only ways that you have the opportunity to get it right. And like you said, taking those fails, failing forward and using those as motivation to actually learn. Because I know myself, I see things and I see people eating stuff and working out and doing things, routines that I used to think as my, at my highest weight. Well, I'd never be able to do that. I'd never be able to work out like that. I would never be able to eat that. I would never be able to get on a bike and ride, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles. But now in the time, you know, after I've hit a year out, I'm looking at a lot of those things as like, 
I can't wait to try to do those things. I want to, yeah. I actually want to do and try and do those things to see mm -hmm. if it's something that I can do because now I know I can do it. It's just going to take a lot of work to get to that point. Um, well, it's like the evidence, right? We're just collecting the, the more evidence that we have along the way, the more that we can believe in what we really want to believe in, which is I can live my life at a healthy weight, right? It, our, our mindset shift goes from I can never live my life at, at a healthy weight to maybe I can, I have to try because it's going to kill me. And then we have surgery and then our mindsets go in a very different direction of, oh my God, why did I do this? Right? Because we're in so much pain. But then those little victories start, those little pieces of evidence start coming up. We lose our first 20 pounds. We drop a pant size or a bra size or a shirt size, or, or all of a sudden we, we go to do something and we realize, oh my God, that was easy. Why is this so easy? Oh, it's because I've lost weight, right? All of a sudden these, these pieces of evidence start falling into place where we can finally make the, the shift to, oh, maybe I can live my life at a healthy weight. Right. And then for me, I, I know there was a moment uh, not too long ago where I felt this, this weight lift and it, it was a shift to maybe I can do this to, oh no, I will live the rest of my life at a healthy weight. There is no, maybe no, that, that was completely gone because I finally had enough evidence to convince even myself. Nope. This is true. This is true. Um, there was something when you said I, I wrote some uh, a note um, about the tool. <laughs> I'm like, I got this index card here. Um, you know, we have to believe that we have the ability to lose weight ourselves because we've tried losing weight for so long that we think that we can't lose weight on our own. And then what happens is that you get the surgery and you hold you make this tool responsible for losing the weight. And in the beginning, you are losing weight. And I think a lot of people um, think that the only reason that they're losing weight is because of the tool. And I think that what happens is when the tool starts slowing down and they, they never started to believe in themselves, that's when they think that they're never going to lose the weight because they, they really give this tool so much power instead of, starting to believe in themselves. And it's it just, I don't know. I know we were talking about this, but I was like, I need to write this down before I forget. Holy shit. You are so right. People yeah. put people put their weight loss responsibility a hundred percent on the tool. That's yeah, the only reason I lost 30 pounds. Yeah, they don't give themselves the credit for any of the work that they put in, not realizing that, yeah, the tool the tool is only an assistant. Like, you still did the work. Like, you did all the things you did to get to the way that you are, and you can keep going. Just because the tool, the effectiveness of the tool has slowed down doesn't mean you can't continue to do the things that you set in place for yourself these first, you know, 9 to 12 months to keep doing those things to keep losing the weight. And, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, because, well, I mean, and that's another thing. We don't give ourselves a lot of credit because we're not used to doing that either, you know, before we have the surgery, because there's really not anything to give ourselves credit for, because we just continue to go through the motions every day at a heavy weight, because we really can't do anything else. It takes so much of our effort, time, and, and thought process just to make it through the damn day at our heaviest that there's really nothing to celebrate. Right. And, and we don't do the mindset work. Well, not we, but you know, if you don't do the mindset work, you don't understand that. You don't understand that you have to start believing in yourself. <laughs> and then you really start blaming the tool if you are stalling or regaining. And it's like, no, you still have power. It's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I feel like I hear. I mean, oh my God. I, I, mean, I, I think we all need to start just, yeah, just, just. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for coming to our TED Talk. Yeah. I mean, like, Jesus Christ. But that is so true. Oh, my God. Nobody has ever verbalized that before. But you are right. You go into the surgery and you are, oh, you are, damn it, Mabel. God, you are smart. But it's, but it's so true, right? Because we go into the surgery and we are, again, shifting the responsibility and the blame away from us onto the tool. Well, the tool didn't work. Bullshit. The tool, the, <laughs> the tool did exactly what it was supposed to do. And that is to tell you, you are full and that you need to stop eating. 
but the response, but, but still you stop eating when you stopping consuming food when you feel full is you taking responsibility. That is you doing work. You are simply, I mean, it's like, I keep going back to the hammer and the house metaphor, right? Like you buying a hammer is not going to build the damn house. The hammer is not going to build the house for you. It's a tool that you literally have to pick up and use if you want to build the house. But if you're not using the hammer properly, it ain't going to work, right? You're not going to get your house built. And if you use the hammer one day and then don't use it, you ain't going to build your house, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the whole concept of building this house is us taking responsibility for it and actually doing the work, using the tool properly. But I can't blame not, I can't blame my house not getting built on the hammer because that wasn't the issue. That, that isn't what was there. That's why oh. mindset work is so important because if you don't do the work, then you'll think that life is just happening to you because you're not really mm -hmm. analyzing and e evaluating yourself if you're not sitting down to actually think about what you're thinking and how is that creating the results in your life. That's why you have to do it. Oh my God, I, I need to go lay down. I need to like, oh, I, I, I mean, you know, I feel like I'm not a smoker. I need a smoke. <laughs> Holy shit. And so baby, you and I, we are, I, you are my spirit animal. Just, FYI. I want to, I want to let you know that. But when you and I, we both, I saw us, you and I both were like, I gotta write this down. Doing yeah. this. <laughs> Shit, I gotta get this down. Well, because, okay, so this is trademarked and copyrighted. I'm taking ownership of this one. You can have the other one. But, but you but you made this come together. Here's here's a, another truth bomb for us. We have to get it wrong to get it right. I got chills in my own words. No, it's, it's so true though. <laughs> Again, <laughs> thank you for coming to our TED Talk we're done we're done <laughs> but holy shit right like yeah oh my god that is that is huge yeah we need to shift the responsibility of our weight loss away from our tool and back where it belongs which is us which is the work that we're doing internally um yeah and we have to get curious and we have to know that we we have to, we have to get it wrong if we want to get it right we just have to we do that's the only way that you know that you've gotten it wrong there's no possible way to get to point B if you do not go through the trenches and try to figure no. it out. No. There's no skipping that part. I always There's tell no. people you cannot skip the part of learning and growing and falling. It's nothing has gone wrong. At the end of the day, you are still growing, even if you don't achieve the goal. Yeah. You just skip over that part. Yeah. Well, and, uh, uh, I, I grew up in a, in a family where the History Channel was like on all the time. And the common theme that I really took away from learning about World War II was they wouldn't have had success without Normandy, right? If they, if they had not stormed the beaches of France, they would not have had victory. And all of those generals knew that they were sacrificing, uh, you know, thousands, thousands and thousands of men but they had to do that to get to victory. And, yeah. it, you know, I mean, a totally different concept, but you have to throw yourselves on the beaches of Normandy. You've got to crawl up those cliffs. You're going to have to get shot at. You're going to bleed. You're going to, you're going to go through some real horrible things, but that's what it takes to, to have that victory. If you don't do that work, you're never, you're not going to get there. You're just not. Yeah. Yes, well, and, oh. and to think about it, like even, you know, we, we talk about this, I, you know, like I said, I'm a year out. And last night I just had an incident. We were out to eat doing stuff, you know, I'm on vacation sitting there and they messed up my order and they brought out fries with my dinner, but they brought out another half a plate of fries too. And they were like, do you want us to just leave these? And my old brain was like, hell yeah, I want you to Let's leave do those, it. I want those to have what I got. And in my mind, I'm, I'm having this like inner struggle, like, but you can't eat any of that stuff, let alone the, the portion you've got plus what they brought. Like, you got it. No, mm -hmm. cut all that shit. So I eventually looked at it and was like, no, take those away. And just, I mean, just old brain coming back to it, that's exactly what happens. I mean, it, it doesn't yeah. just go away because even though you do the work and you process this stuff on a daily basis, these times are going to still come back and your old brain will still peek out and be like, yeah, go ahead and take those. And, but you know damn good well you're not going to take them. And you couldn't eat them if you did. Mm -hmm. But it's just, that's the type of stuff that still comes back. 
So regardless of how much work you put in, you know, those times are still going to creep back and that's okay. Like it happens. It's how you're you deal aware. With it's not that they, it's not that they come back. It's how you deal with them. That's that, that determines at the end of the day, whether or not that you succeeded in that, what you were trying to do. Right. It's your awareness. And again, what are you making of me? Oh, it's just my silly brain again. We ain't, we're not going to go through this. We're making the other decision instead of like, oh my God, I'm going to be fat forever because I'm thinking about this food. And you know what I mean? Like people make things so dramatic and that causes so much unnecessary pain. But when yes. you know that it's just your brain being normal and it changes everything. Right. But, but if, if people have lived their lives in drama for the past 20 years, that's normal. That is comforting for them. Drama yeah. is comforting, which that is true. Right. So, but again, it just goes back to that, why this is so important. Right. We, and exactly as you said, you need to look at your, you need to look at your results. Are you happy with your results? You're not. Then what's, what is driving those results, right? It's your feelings, it's your thoughts, it's your actions, it's all of these things. And if we can get to the root of what is causing that, we can, we can shift our mindset to be yeah. one that serves us instead of keeps us stuck, yes. keeps us hindered. And it's possible. Wow. Nobody's a unicorn. Everybody has a human brain. Your brain is not special. <laughs> that is so hard to hear. I mean, come on, babe. I think I got a pretty special brain. No, nope. you're telling me. Sorry. Man, that is, you are cold-blooded. You know that? You are cold-blooded. <laughs> No, you got to, you got no, and, but that's funny that you say that though, because you, once again, we go back to, you have to give yourself credit because while your brain is no more exceptional than anyone else's, your drive and determination is, and that's where you have to celebrate yourself because you got to where you are with a very normal brain by driving yourself and being determined to get where you are and to, and to treat life the way you treat it. You're a very, you know, that's, this is the perfect example between you and I. You are very structured. You are very step-by-step. -step. Processes have to be processes and everything has to be in its place. And it has to be, you know, it's got to be that way for your life to function. And I've been very much wing it, fly by the seat of my pants, make it happen regardless at the end of the day, I still get to point, you know, to point B, but we get there very different ways. So, yeah, but that's, that's the, that's the celebration you have to, give to your and give yourself that credit because you're yeah. able to do what you did with the same brain that all the rest of us have. Yeah. Management, brain management. Yep. Yep. And being curious, really. I mean, just all of these things that we've talked about in this conversation, we have to get curious. We have to recognize that our brain is functioning properly and it's doing what it should do, but that there are parts of it that are no longer serving us. And we need to, we need to do this work to shift that mindset and to help our brains get to the point where it is serving us instead of hindering us. And that is the work of weight loss surgery. That is the, that is the work of, of shifting our mindsets. Um, I just thought about something that I wanted to add. A lot of people will come up to me and tell me, well, I don't have time to work on my mindset. <laughs> There's too much going on in my life. Uh, I can't journal, I can't do all the things. And mm -hmm. this is the reason why, I mean, this is gonna sound harsh, but I love telling the truth. This is the reason why your life is a hot mess because you haven't sat down to analyze your life. Like your life is not happening to you. You are creating your life. And because you are not taking the time to organize your life, to think about what you're thinking, this is why you don't have enough time. Yes. Well, and and you do have time. I, I, I maybe again, this is why you're my spirit animal because I do not listen to people's bullshit. When they come to me like, I don't have time. Girl, girl, bro, you have time. You have time to sit on the couch and watch three hours of billions. You have time to sit on Instagram and look at our very amazing East to West feed. I'm not going to slight you for that, but you know what I mean? It's like, you've got time for this because you are putting time into areas of your life that are, that you think are providing value to you, right? So you do have the time. You need to just stop watching, doing whatever is not serving you and put that time into what will serve you. You, it, it yeah. If it's meaningful for you, you will make time for it. You mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and how, I mean, for people that don't prioritize themselves and their life, if you, I mean, if, if you're really go, if you really feel like you're going through it and you're having a rough struggle, the only thing you should make time for out of any of that 
is to first prioritize yourself. Make yourself the priority, figure out what's going on, start doing triage on those situations that aren't serving you, and then you can move forward. And like Mabel said, life won't happen to you. You know, your life will happen for you. Right, you're creating your life. Um, yes. I, I was just gonna create a um, Instagram post on this. Like people think that taking care of other people first like it is, it's, it's more important than taking care of themselves. And it's like, you're not really truly being honest with yourself when you take care of others first, because now you are expecting them to take care of you. But when you take care of yourself first, then when you take and take care of others, it's coming from a place of love and compassion. It's not coming from a place like, oh, I got to take care of everybody. And then you realize like, oh, nobody's taking care of me. Yes. Nobody, yeah. Now you now you start hating other people for not doing the same thing that you're doing to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you, can't, yeah. you can't help somebody else if your tank is empty. Like you have nothing to give anybody else. Like if I if I if you needed to ride to the store and I was gonna take you there, but I didn't have any gas, we're not going to the store. So at the same time, it's like when you're on an airplane and they tell you you have to put your own oxygen mask on before you help somebody else, because if you're both passed out, what the hell's the point? So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're not serving anybody if you don't have the energy to do so. You're take yeah, like like Mabel said, you're gonna take care of them and there's gonna be spite, there's gonna be, you know, you're not gonna do it from a place of love and positivity because you're not helping yourself first. You've got to fill your own tank, and that takes time to step away, self-care, whatever self-care looks like to you, that's what you need before you can turn around and help somebody else. Because if you've got nothing to give, what are you doing? Well, and, and again, I picked up this book again because, <laughs> but the, this book really helped me. You know how sometimes you, know, you hear something 50 times, you hear the same thing 50 times. And then on the 51st time you hear it a different way. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's what this means. Yep. The, this book mm -hmm. did that for me. There's a chapter in here, chapter three, it's called I'm Wired to Win. And the first time I read this chapter, I was like, this makes no sense. Because what he's basically saying is that if you're doing things, but they're not serving you, your brain is wired to win. So you are proving something about not accomplishing whatever it is that you want because your brain's wired to win. So you are winning at not getting that thing done because that's what you believe about yourself. And I was like, oh crap. So by me not working out, I'm just reinforcing my incorrect belief that I'm not a fit person or that I don't like exercise or I don't want to be healthy, which is not true. But I've, I've believed this false thing about myself for so long. I'm wired now to, to, to make sure that I'm winning at that false belief every single time because I'm wired to win. Mm -hmm. And in this chapter, he says, which Mabel, you've been saying this entire time, right? The key here is to question yourself, to look at your actions. What is the real point to all of this? What is it that you get to be right about when all is said and done? Ooh. Ooh. Right? And I was like, oh, this is part, this is the part where I chucked this book across the room. So I was like, <laughs> F you, Gary Bishop. And he, he goes on to say, we hold a certain belief about ourselves or our life that we prove right time and time again through our everyday actions, right? Mm -hmm. But to succeed in another more positive way, you have to prove those firmly held beliefs wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is the work of yeah. life. And it is the work of weight loss surgery. Proving those, those firmly held beliefs wrong is very difficult, but that is how we actually get to become a different person. And if we want to live our lives at a different weight, we have to be a different person because we don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's the whole point of going through this. We got a tool to help us figure out how to do that. And if we don't use the tool right, and if we don't acknowledge that the, that our, our bariatric procedure is a very small portion of that, then 99% of it is what we do with it, then we will not find success. Um, I thought about something that I wanted to say. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but all my life, as I was overweight, I always hid behind the curtain. I was never like in the front or center. I never put myself first. I, everything was always about everybody else because I didn't know how to make my own self happy or mm -hmm. even knew what it meant to just be with myself. Mm -hmm. So it might be difficult for some to actually sit down to decide to work on their mindset 
because they never really put themselves first. They always just sat in the background. And then it might be scary to even think that you are capable of being this great person. What would everybody think? Uh, Will you make others feel uncomfortable now that you're shining? Mm -hmm. Like some people just really don't wanna do this work because they're afraid of who they'll become and how that is gonna change the people around them. Well, I mean, you, you've been afraid of rejection for so long, or you feel rejected because of your weight. And now that I've done something, what happens if I'm still rejected and I'm smaller? What is that going to say about me? What was that's the point what of we all think, of right? What was the point of all of this? But that's the wrong mindset. It isn't about being rejected or, or accepted. It's about finally seeing yourself. It's about finally living the life that you have always wanted. Not what other people want, not what other people say, not the judgments of other people. Those are going to come regardless of your size. Doesn't it's gonna, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what clothes you wear, what, what your hair color is, the makeup that you wear, the, the shoes or the hats that you put on. They're going to judge you no matter what. So to, to think that that judgment or, or that that spotlight is not going to come on you when you are thinner is simply not true. That is a false belief. That is an arrival fallacy. If I have ever seen one in my life, mm-hmm. you have to be you have to get to the point where you are doing the work for you. Damned what everybody else says, does or think about you. It does yeah, not haters, matter. Haters don't have a size tag. They don't give a shit. They don't care. No. They're going to hate on people regardless. Right. And, and we see this play out every day in our society. Look at these celebrities. Look at these people that we hold up on these pedestals. People mm-hmm. attack them no matter what. And I always think this, too, when, when you see these Hollywood couples, Brad Pitt and Angelina, like two very beautiful people. They they no. didn't work out. Right. Like, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. You have to just do your life for you and in the way that feels right and authentic and best for you, because people are going to hate no matter what it's not going to make a damn bit of difference. So mm-hmm. we, we have to do it for, for us and, and move forward with, with that truth. Mm-hmm. Holy Jesus, you guys, again, I need, I need, I need to smoke. I need to go <laughs> I need to sit on my, on my back porch and, oh my God. Uh, uh, yeah. Think long and hard about this. Mabel, you have a mindset coaching platform, correct? I do. Tell us a little bit about that. So if people are as mind blown as we are and they want to access you on a more intimate level, if they, if they want your expertise one-on-one, how can they do that? Well, um, I started Beyond the Sleep Academy and it's basically a membership where we take, like every, every month is a new topic. And what we do is that we apply this mindset work on a daily basis, because I understand You don't know what you don't know. So we sometimes need directions. Like my life coach, I have a life coach too. Um, She helps me apply my work daily. And so I wanted to create a program for our community so that you can work on your mindset on a daily basis. And you'll have access to me. You have access to other women who are working on their mindsets too. Because here's the problem too. Um, Some of these Facebook groups, I mean, I, I love them. But I don't, there's really nothing um, constructive going on, but people comparing and answering, asking questions that, and no answer, like Mm -hmm. there's nothing productive. And Mm -hmm. so I wanted to create a space um, where we had productive conversations about mindset and I'll be all in your, I'll be all in your business and I'll (laughs) tell you the truth about your life. (laughs) That is like what my life coach says to me. Um, and really show you, like, give you a blueprint. You t- you'll tell me exactly what you want out of your life, and I'll give you a blueprint of how to get there. I can't get there for you, but I'll hold your hand throughout the way. Um, wow. That's, yeah, so. that's pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. <laughs> it's not amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it truly does. It truly does. Oh, so if, if people want to access your service, where can they find you? How do they find out more information about what you offer? Well, you could go on my Instagram page. On my bio, there is a link there with the information about the program. You could follow me on Instagram, of course. Um, and also you could go to www.beyondthesleeveacademy.com for more information there as well. 
Awesome. Well, Mabel, when people reach out to us and they have questions about mindset, I hope you know we are just going to straight direct them to go to go see you. Do it. And, and we love we love following you. We love your Instagram page because it is you really put out things that are usable and valuable in the moment, right? It, it gives us something to think about and reflect on. And, and it's tool, it, you know, it, it's tools that we can use to really help us check our mindset and to reconnect with our mindset and to make the changes that, that we need to change. So yeah, mm -hmm. your, your insight and your expertise is invaluable in this community. And we just cannot thank you enough for, for being the person that you are and being so open and honest about your experience and just being a rock star in our community. Thank you so much. That was real, like my heart right now is like, <laughs> Thank you. That's it. My day is complete hey. today. <laughs> well, Mabel, we, we thank you so very much for, for joining us today. Uh, we, we know that your time is valuable. And, and again, we just, we, we very, very much appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank if you. you if you enjoy what, what you are seeing, please do support Mabel. Uh, you know, again, like and follow her on, on all social media. And if you like what we are doing here at East to West, we want to let all of you guys know you can become patrons of East to West. And what that means is that you would like to support us on a little bit of a different level. Uh, it costs money to, to produce this type of support. Mabel knows that. We, we all know that. And if you would like to kind of help us keep this support coming in our community, you can become a patron of East to West. For as little as $5 a month, you're going to get early access to podcast episodes you're going to get special invitations uh to like uh, ama events and uh one-on-ones with people just like Mabel. Uh, we also uh, like to recipe test all of our new ideas with, with our patrons. So if you would like to support us in that way, you're gonna get some thank you benefits uh, that just let you know that we very much value the, the, the contribution and, and the support that, that you're helping us do here at East to West. So you can find out more, head to our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash East to West WLS, and you can see uh, all that information there. Jason, how else can people support us? Uh, if you do like what you're, uh, what the support that you're getting out of us and uh, all of our guests, you can also visit our YouTube channel. So it'll be uh, YouTube. It'll be East yep. Number Two West Underscore WLS. Please like, share, subscribe, share these things with your friends. Anybody that you think would get benefit out of the uh, conversations that we have, uh, we would definitely appreciate that. Yep. And the other really cool thing that we really kind of just discovered is that you can leave us a voice message on our Anchor homepage. So you can go to anchor.com backslash east to west WLS and you can like leave us a voice message. So if there's feedback that you want to give us, is there a comment on the podcast that you've heard? If there's a question that you have, you can leave it there and then we can actually incorporate it into the podcast, which would just be amazing so definitely head to there if you have anything that you want to let us know and of course we're always here for feedback so drop us a direct message on instagram send us an email if there is support that you feel is missing we want to be the the people that, that help create that for you so we are always open this feedback is absolutely welcome because we know that we're not experts even in doing this because april and i literally just press record one day and start it. So mm -hmm. if there's something that we're, you know, in an area that we're not hitting that we need to, please let us know. Uh, you can leave us feedback, reviews on all of our YouTube, the podcast, or whatever platform it is that you listen to the podcast on, please leave reviews for us because that helps us get noticed so that we can continue bringing support to more and more people. So we appreciate that as well. Yep, exactly. All right, Jason, my friend, you want to take us out? I do. We thank you again for all the support that we get from you guys. Mabel, thank you again. And just remember at the end of the day, you've got this, we've got you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Mabel. Thank you. <laughs>